Launched in 2016 in where else but Okayama, where most of Japan's legendary denim is crafted, Tanuki Jeans has catapulted in popularity in the denim scene, achieving serious notoriety in a seriously short span of time. Now, I used to think that Tanuki meant raccoon, but it actually means raccoon dog, which is a real animal that looks like what it sounds like. I mean, look at this, look at this ridiculous looking animal. The Tanuki has a rich history in Japanese folklore as a supernatural being capable of feats of transformation. The Tanuki is a shapeshifter. You may recall Mario shapeshifting into one in Mario 3, or maybe a Mario game that wasn't released in the 1980s. And transformation is the theme of the brand. The slogan is even transform your being, which makes sense given that people buy selvage denim for the transformation, to see it change and evolve and yes, fade, but take on the stories that it's lived. Multiple outlets that I've reported on the brand describe it as formed by a super team of denim experts who have worked cumulative decades in the industry. And among other high-tech, low-tech achievements, they've figured out a method of rope dyeing that uses less indigo than more traditional rope dyeing techniques to achieve the same deep indigo color. Tanuki is also known for their clean construction lines, their modern fits, and their extreme mystique. For example, if you want to know who comprises that super team of denim experts that founded the brand, you are out of luck. They are enormously secretive with who is involved with the brand. There are some rumors that they're like a subset of Oni denim, but like there could be rumors, I don't know, I can't confirm because these guys don't confirm anything about themselves. In fact, with the label you get with these jeans, they say our names don't matter. What matters is that we are taking the past and looking forward. What matters is that we are here to maintain an art alive. Tanuki will transform with you, will grow with you, will be a part of you. So the jeans we're looking at today are part of their Kaze line, Kaze meaning wind, and it's a really good example of their innovative approach to denim. These jeans might look faded, but they are not. They have an unusual dyeing technique here they've used to maintain this color. And there's a lot of other really interesting and surprisingly modern techniques they've applied to the very heritage garment that is the jean. So let's take a closer look. So this denim is 13 ounces, which is one of the lightest offerings from Tanuki, and it's the lightest color as well, the lightest color blue anyway. It's designed to be very breathable, which it is, and it obviously stands out for its unique, brilliant shade of indigo. This isn't like fake faded jeans or anything, although it is intended to pay homage to the vintage denim of the 60s and 70s. The color is achieved with fewer rope dye dips. They say on their site, quote, it will decrease in the time of each dip and quicker exposure to oxygen after each dip. And it's also meant to result in some greenish undertones in the denim, which are a little more noticeable in direct sunlight, though they'll be even more noticeable once I wash this a few times. So that's how they make the warp. The weft is a rustic, unbleached beige that you can see poking through here which is often considered something of a throwback to old fashioned jeans when they have like a beige weft because that's how they were made and the beige comes through more as the denim fades. The beige weft is cheese dyed, which is complex, but it means it's performed at temperatures over boiling and under high pressure in a rotating drum and this results in most of the excess water being removed. An extra interesting fact about this denim is that it's a combination of short staple Californian cotton and longer staple Peruvian asparagus cotton. Long staple cotton generally being more desired because it's very resilient. Short staple is cheaper and easy to grow and it's what like over 90% of cotton in the US is made from. So you get down this a little dry, it's like crisp, but still comfortable. Take a real close look, you'll see the warp shows some loom shutter, like slubbiness from the Toyota loom, but it's really low tension weave. And it's not a very rough denim, it's more like textured than rough. So when it comes to the features of the jeans, there's a lot going on here besides the denim itself. The main thing you're probably gonna notice, the first thing you're probably gonna notice is the Japanese knee symbol. So you get that here on the back pocket, it's quite prominent, and you also get it etched into the deer skin leather patch up here. So knee is the Japanese number for two, and the lines are very representative of the brand's mythos. This mythos of like change and going forward, taking history, building on it. The bottom line symbolizes history, tradition, and peace. The top line represents future change and strength, and it's red and white to represent Japan's flag. Some other cool features worth noting with these jeans are the front pockets are really surprisingly deep and they're also lined with this really funky herringbone fabric. On the back pockets, they're also quite large and they're also slightly flared as well, as you can see. And there's a light stitch running along the middle of the pocket that's a bit hard to see and that's because the bottom of the pockets is also lined. There's a lot to say with the stitching with these jeans. It's all really neat and dense and consistent. Like universally when people are looking at Tanuki jeans, they always remark on how dense and like well-constructed all the stitching is. And there's a lot of color going on in the stitching. If we take a closer look at it, you'll notice like many different colors here. There's at least like six that I've counted. So on the back, you're gonna get the traditional sort of a lemon tea, I think is what people normally call it. The lemon tea contrast of like yellow stitching and darker orange stitching, yes. 
but you've also got a bright blue, almost like electric blue stitching going down the inside of the leg and in a few other bits of the jeans as well. You got bright red stitching in the selvage ID. You've also got some of that blue stitching on the coin pocket and on the inside of the coin pocket, you've also got a bit of the selvage ID as well. Moving on to the buttons. On the button fly, you've got a really, really cool stylized picture of a tanuki on each one of the buttons of the fly. On the inside of those, you've got the knee symbol on the inside of the button fly. For the other rivets, on the inside, it has the word universal, and on the outside, you've got the word tanuki written in there. On the inside of the jeans, meanwhile, you've got some really nice picture of a tanuki on the inside of the waist patch. And then the front of it, you get this unusual quote underneath the model number that says, autumn arrives as the yokai rise. That's a quote that I could not find anywhere on the internet and not totally sure what it's referring to, but yokai are a type of Japanese demon. So I don't know, maybe the tanuki here can help you to fight the demons. Now as for the fit and sizing, these jeans have a really nice high rise, which Snooki has become quite well known for. They didn't really have that when they first came out, but now they're a favorite for guys who need a high rise, which I do because like my butt is like very tall. And it's also got a very nice taper going down it as well. Now I don't love to talk about the fit and sizing too much because everyone's body is different, of course, but I do want to note that like, yes, I acknowledge that in these clips of me working on these jeans, they are a little bit baggy. And there are two reasons for that. Number one is that I got these at the start of lockdown. And since then I've lost like 10 pounds. So uh, my clothes are kind of falling off me a little bit here. And the second reason is these jeans really stretch quite a lot. So my waist is 32 inches. That's like my true size. I think probably before lockdown, I might've been like a 33 or a 34. Today it's a 32 inches. These jeans are 32 inches, but measuring them after a couple months of wear, these are actually 34 inches now. So they've stretched like a good two inches since I got them. The other measurements you want to know about, the rise is 12 inches at the front and 17 inches in the back. The thigh opening is a little over 24 inches. Knees are 18 inches and at the bottom of the cuff is a nice 15 inches. So heed my advice if you're considering getting these or any of the Kaze jeans from Tanuki, you want to make sure you size down probably a good two inches. Now, as far as the price goes, uh, you can get these on Blue Owl for $295, Snooki's own website, they're $285, and on Denimio, they're $240 something, dollars, $242, I think it is. Uh, Denimio actually has a lowest price guarantee. I think that's new. I didn't say that the last time I was there. So yeah, it's a pretty good place to get your jeans. And also, uh, I have a discount code with them. So if you have an account, you have to make an account to do it, but if you have an account, and if you haven't used this discount code before, you can put it in Stridewise and you get 10% off. So Denimio, they're very inexpensive at Denimio. Uh, normally I like to send people to Okayama Denim because I know the guy who runs it, but these things are not available there. And that's like a thing with Tanuki that they're very, they're kind of exclusive. Like they're not available in as many places as a lot of other Japanese denim brands are. That's like part of their cachet, like the mystique and the exclusivity are like a big part of the brand, right? Um, as far as the value for mine, like is that worth it? Uh, they are Japanese jeans and they are under 300 bucks. And like, let's say they're 250 ish dollars, like on average. Um, that is pretty good value, uh, given the fact that there's like a lot of, it's very, very dense construction. There's like a lot of real like craftsmanship in these jeans. And also they have like very innovative rope dyeing techniques and so on. They make this really interesting, vibrant, unusual shade of denim, all this kind of stuff. Um, I don't think it's a terrible price. I do think it's worth remembering though, that these are 13 ounces. So a lot of the time when Japanese jeans are 300, 350 bucks, that's when they are over 15 ounces, 16, 17, 18 ounces, sometimes 20 ounces. These are 13 ounces and they're about $250. So I would honestly be pretty surprised if these were under $200, given all the stuff I've said about the brand and the construction and everything else. Um, but it's just worth remembering that, yeah, you are paying 250 ish bucks, but they're still lightweight jeans. They're not the really thick, thick, thick jeans you might be used to if you have a lot of denim from Japanese brands. Okay, pros and cons. Why should you consider getting a pair of Tanuki jeans? Uh, I read a review of these jeans from Indigo Shrimp who said that Tanuki is an important turning point in Japanese denim as it transitions to its next phase to be fully integrated into 21st century fashion. In other words, Tanuki is a brand and in particular, the Kaze is a jean that is less heritage -y and workhorsey and more a high-end streetwear jean designed to be very happily worn with like white sneakers. It's trying to fuse the old and the new, or perhaps more accurately, take the old into the new century, marrying the solid construction with newer dyeing methods, newer colors, brighter multicolored stitching, all of this in very stark contrast to like the full count jeans I reviewed last, which are very faithful recreations of vintage jeans. 
Tanuki, my friends, is the future. Or it's modern, if you want to talk about it a bit less dramatically. So I guess it's like my summary of the whole product, right? It's like salvage for the new age. Everything here is really innovative. Like not just this really eye-popping blue, but the stitching, in addition to being like really tight and consistent and well done, is like a wide variety of colors. You got this really funky herringbone on the inside of the pocket. The design is like very modern, this like relaxed, tapered, high-rise sort of fit. And even the knee branding here comes off as like a minimalist feat of design. So yeah, it's uh Sell it for the new age. That's the kind of thing you want. If you want Japanese jeans that fit more neatly into a 21st century wardrobe, Tanuki has got you covered. The main uh, potential downsides with this brand, uh, they do stretch pretty considerably. I guess that's partly my fault because I lost a bit of weight there, but um, not everyone likes jeans that stretch like two inches in the waist and then they shrink again when you wash them and they stretch again and so on. I know that happens with most jeans, but especially with this lighter color, it's a bit harder to pull off um, slightly baggy, lighter colored jeans. It's worth mentioning. Um, they are very modern. I know I've said that a lot, but uh, some people consider that sort of, you know, antithetical to the idea of raw denim. A really good comparison is the full count review that I did recently on my channel. That's like really, really faithful recreation of a very, very old fashioned pair of jeans. This is not that. Um, it's a bit of a straw man, I guess. Like maybe people aren't really saying that, but uh, if your thing is you like raw denim because they're so close to like the old Levi's of the 19th century and stuff, uh, you know, Tanuki isn't quite the brand for you there. The mystique of the brand also frustrates a lot of people, especially in like an age where people demand transparency from the companies they're shopping at. I saw someone on Reddit say that Tanuki seems like a company designed by marketing executives, which I thought was a really good take. Uh, other people say you have to take, you know, cultural differences into account and so on. I don't really have a horse in that race, but um, it's the chief complaint I hear about this brand is that they're so secretive. And on a similar note, they're very exclusive as well, right? Like I just told you a bunch of places you can get them. The Nimeo, they're very inexpensive there. Uh, Blue Owl is like really into Tanuki. Uh, I couldn't find them at Blue and Green here in New York, which is where I try to do most of my jeans shopping. Uh, they're not Nokia, I'm a denim. And another big thing is that even if you do find a place that has Tanuki, a lot of stockists don't have the same models as other stockists. So you have to kind of be a bit of a detective. If you've got a model that you really like, you have to do a bit of what to try and hunt it down. All right, man, that's it. That's my review of the Tanuki jeans, the Kaze lightweight summary very light colored, eye popping sort of jeans. Uh, it's, a, it's a unique company, man. There's really a lot of interesting stuff going on here. People tend to either love them or hate them, um, but I'm quite happy to have them in my collection. I do need to give them a really hot wash and then put them in the dryer to shrink them as much as I can. But otherwise, yeah, they're a pretty cool pair of jeans. Uh, the full written review is in the description below if you wanna check that out as well. Uh, I got a link to Denimio down there as well. Uh, remember that Stridewise code can give you 10% off, I think, if I haven't canceled it. And uh, make sure you subscribe as well because I got a whole lot more, yeah, raw denim reviews, bit reviews, and all sorts of uh, heritage-y kind of stuff coming up.